Greetings, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm uh, happy to uh, see some of the faces that I've known over the years. I, I uh, actually met Sensation Tanny, I believe it was in 1969. And uh, he awarded me my show, Dan, in 73, I believe it was. Uh, and over the years, I Everything that Lou said really uh, struck home with me. He was such a humble and, and gentle person. Uh, and over the years, I not only trained with him, but I really got to, to just sit with him a lot of times and talk with him about life in general and, and his life in particular. And so my, uh, my thing I want to share tonight is about... Um, things he told me about his early training with Sensei uh, Kitagawa in uh, the New Denver camp in uh, BC. And um, I, I think most people have heard the stories of you know how Sensei and the guys that were out looking to, for frozen uh, ponds to play hockey ran across this uh, elderly uh, Okinawan gentleman who was punching and kicking the bark off the trees but um, Sente gave me a lot more about those stories other than just his, his uh, meeting him there. And, and one of the ones that I thought was particularly interesting was I asked him once, did you guys actually have uniforms or geese or whatever? And he says, well, not really. He said, we wore a kimono, so to speak, and we all wore uh, just a white uh uh, an off-colored piece of canvas around uh, for a belt. But he said, where we got these kimonos from was uh, Sensei Kitagawa was suffering from tuberculosis and had been placed in the new Denver camp, internment camp, uh, because there was a sanatorium there. And he said, Kitagawa would uh, go in the uh, dining hall and steal the canvas uh, tablecloths and then actually fashion geese for them. And he said, you know, he had, he goes on one of his fingers where you push a needle through and you usually have a thimble. He said, uh, since they had a, uh, it was just one big callus there where he'd sit and sew these uniforms for us. And so that's kind of where they, they got their uniforms from. And he said, we never wore a, a, a black belt at all. No one ever had one, not even, uh, Sensei Kitagawa. So I, I asked him about the training and he said, well, he said, here's an example of one of the, the uh, training days. He said, Sensei Kitagawa got us all together and asked us to meet on this particular little like hill. And he said, we got there and Sensei had us all stripped down to nothing but our undershorts. And then he had us cover ourselves with honey. And he said, you know, I didn't know exactly what, what that process was supposed to be about, but he said, I did it. Uh, and he said, then we started standing and just punching and, and blocking and kicking. And he said, lo and behold, he had us on an anthill. Uh, and the ants just started crawling up all over us. And he said, we had to stay, stay there and work out the entire time while those ants were biting us and stinging us and he said you know he said I used to think to myself could it get any worse and he said I kept going back every day and he said a lot of it was about okay he did this to us yesterday can it get any more brutal can he come up with something more brutal for the next day and he said oh yes every single day there was something more brutal that he would do to us uh in the training and it was, as he talked about the training, it was, it was quite brutal. Uh, but then he once told me, he said, you know, Bob, he said, I got, I got my viciousness from Sensei Kitagawa, but I got my gentleness from my mother. And he said, and they both have served me very well. Both have all served me well. And, and that brought to mind, um, uh, if you if you ever got on the floor with Sensei, he could go from being this calm, relaxed individual to this explosive, unbelievable, frightening 
individual and then immediately become a very calm individual again. And he often talked about that, like you have to learn how to be able to really bring it all out and then be able to control it. And he said, I believe I've learned this from Sensei Kitagawa, and I believe I also learned it from, from uh, the humbleness of my mother. And, uh, you know, I asked him once about, I said, how did you learn sword techniques, Sensei? And he said, well, <clears throat> He said, my, my grandfather, who was uh, a descendant of samurai, uh, never had any boys. He didn't have any uh, males to pass it down, so he passed it down to his daughters, one of which was Sensei's mother. And he told me, my mother didn't actually formally teach me sword technique. He said she'd be sitting at the table and we'd all be eating and she had a stick and all of a sudden she'd sort of slide off her chair and she'd perform a movement and then she'd perform it again. Or he said we'd be outside and she'd be raking leaves and she would, you know, pick up a stick and she would start showing movement. And he said, out of all the, uh, he had uh, several sisters and a brother. He said, I, I guess I was the only one that really paid attention. Uh, and and uh, he said, you know how kids are. We don't, you know, we don't want to listen to our parents. Um, and he said, so I was probably the only one that paid attention, which, which kind of brings me back to a memory of the camp. He, he since he had studied um, in uh, Vancouver, he told me he went to, uh, a Japanese school attended that in the evenings and he had studied judo and he had studied kendo and he had studied jujitsu and he had no idea he said at that time karate I had no idea karate existed not not any idea at all and he said so we went to the camp and he says there was a kindly old gentleman teaching Aikido and he said well you know I went along with my mother and took Aikido lessons too uh, but he said, my mother told me to, whoops, I, oh, I'm here, I'm sorry. He says, my mother told me that to stay away from that crazy man that punches the trees and yells. And he said, like any kid, that's the first thing I ran to. Uh, he said, I, you know, he goes, like any teenager, I was going to go right to that. And, and that's where he uh, got his karate start. So those are some of the stories that he had relayed to me over the years. And, and I always enjoyed those about what got him going in karate and, and what his early uh, training was like uh, in the uh, New Denver camp. So I'm glad I could share it with all of you. And uh, I thank you for having me.